So dialogues uh, are interesting in codename one because they block the event dispatch thread. And that's why I thought it's important to take this short detour, uh, both because of that and because the event dispatch thread is a really interesting subject that's applicable to practically every uh, platform out there. And it exists in everything from Swing, AWT, JavaFX, to uh, native platforms like Windows itself and uh, uh, practically JavaScript, everything out there. So it's an interesting concept. Essentially, every graphic toolkit, every modern graphic toolkit, is constructed around a thread that runs in a sort of infinite loop. And it performs all the operations for the graphic toolkit. So it handles the events and it sends all the events from that single thread and it delivers them and it performs all the painting. And now, instant, uh, instinctively, sometimes you might think, uh, why not use the multiple cores that I have by having multiple threads? The thing is that we do have multiple threads, but only one of them is exposed to you as a user and we can rely on that when we do a lot of things internally. And that way we can use all the cores in a very efficient way without synchronizing too much on, uh, on code blocks that are very mission critical. And keep in mind that synchronized is far more expensive than any advantage that we can get from multiple threads when we have like four cores or even a hundred cores. Uh, we'd rather have a single core that's high performance uh, than have multiple cores that all uh, perform very badly. So the event dispatch thread and having it single threaded is very common in practically every operating system and every platform. And it's really, really powerful in that regard. So this is interesting because you're not supposed to block the event dispatch thread. But dialog.show works in a way where it does block the event dispatch thread while we wait for an answer. And, it happen and the answer comes in later. So why is that legal? How does painting still work when a dialog is essentially showing when we're not, uh, when we're still physically in the event dispatch thread because we're handling an event like we did in the previous uh, section? So to understand this, let's go over the what's the EDT. So this is the, a typical EDT in codename one, where codename one internally, and you you'll never technically see this code without actually open opening codename one's code. Uh, and in the, in the codename one code, in display.java, you'd actually see a while loop where while codename one is running, it actually invokes a method called EDT main loop. And you can actually search the code and see that. And this is essentially how this looks. It's in a sort of infinite loop where we invoke the EDT main loop. Now, the tool that we provide internally and also exposed to you is a tool called invoke and block. So you can essentially block the event dispatch thread in a legal way. Dialog.show is one sample of something like that, but we have it all over the code, including things like the web service calls that are synchronous, where we invoke a web service call and it's sort of blocking, but it doesn't really block the EDT. So we use this all the time, and that's a really uh, huge advantage over things like JavaScript, where code needs to always be asynchronous, which is painful to, to code sometimes. So invoke and block uh, works by uh, accepting a runnable for which it spawns a thread. And technically the runnable is executed on a separate thread. And then we have a loop. <coughs> and you'll notice that the loop on the left and the loop on the right are practically identical. Only the difference is that the loop on the left is internally, it's, it's a recursion of the loop on the right. So the invoke and block call really reruns the event dispatch thread inside itself. And uh, when it's finished, it returns back to the, the original EDT. Now, there are some um, limitations. Uh, the, because essentially the EDT is recursed into itself, there's some performance overhead related to invoke and block. We think that the ease of use and ease of programming related to that is definitely worth it. And we definitely recommend that you use it, but don't abuse it, don't use it too much. 
and it's very, very useful in web services and everything in Codename 1. When you can leave the EDT on your own uh, anytime you want and uh, just open a thread. You don't necessarily need to use invoke and block, but it's very useful to be able to do that. And to return back to the event dispatch thread, you can use call serially. I won't go too much into call serially and the event dispatch thread here. Uh, because that's a huge subject in its own and I'll cover it in uh, the different course but generally uh, it's uh, very possible to open separate threads and you should open separate separate threads when you're doing something that's heavy invoke and block is one such way of doing that so let's continue with the actual code of the project 